Hi everyone. So, um, as Rachel has kindly introduced, my name is Amy. I'm from a, space a company called Space Syntax. And today I'd like to talk about um, understanding the health outcomes of urban design and using the tools to support that. So, at Space Syntax, for those who don't know about Space Syntax, Simply put, um, we use um, evidence-based approach to support urban planning and design projects. And at the core of that is a spatial network analysis that we have developed um, the theory as well as techniques over the years. And so using the spatial network analysis, the reason why we do it is because we know that you understand once you understand the network properties, you know that how those influence on movement patterns and other elements of the very important elements for urban design, like land use, economic vitality, crime and carbon emission and so on. And now that um, we have developed uh, techniques uh, further to integrate different data layers, and create an integrated urban modeling um, approach. So we combine land use data and so on. So these are the techniques that we're using to, um, for urban planning and, and design projects. And on top of that, we are currently working with Future Cities Catapult on the project funded by Innovate UK, and it's called Tombolo Project we are developing a digital connector. And what it does to us is that it creates um, a more consistent kind of way of integrating data and so on to support our integrated urban modeling approach. So from our point of view, when we come think about health, the question, key question is that how the design of spatial network influences health outcomes. And we identified three areas that um, we can work using the data and considering the health outcomes. And the first one is active travel, and namely car dependency. So for example, this is an example of Milton Keynes. So we are looking at the data. Um, primarily spatial network. And we assign the speed and look at the network. And we calculated that number of job opportunities, so what shown here is that number of job opportunities, so the, the darker the color is, you have more opportunities to um, within 15 minutes walking distance. So it's purely um, spatial and a physical environment. It doesn't take into account what kind of jobs and um, things like that. But you can see that how physical environment influence on the job opportunities. So this is walking. And if you compare that with public transport, slightly enhanced. Um, but if you compare that with private vehicles, you can see that how, how much advantage that private vehicle network brings. Or the public transport is not matching with the private vehicles. And so if you calibrate that um, between these two parameters, public transport and uh, private vehicles, you can evaluate that how, how much advantageous private vehicle might be. And this one, in, this, in the case of Milton Keynes, for example, that's the gray ones that it might be quite subtle to see, but gray, areas are the ones which are close. Public transport brings almost the same amount of job opportunities as private vehicles, but nowhere has adva um, the private public transport has advantage. And this is purely the spatial and the physical and transport network conditions. But you can imagine that the how um, easy to depend on cars in this sort of environment as opposed to um, use public transport. Second one, 
is access to services. So as well as network, where things are impact on health in many different ways. Firstly, this is an example of Greenwich. And we looked at, um, in this case, seven different elements, diff seven different land uses, which are of fre frequent use. And the red means that red, you have access to seven different types of land use within five minutes walking distance. And the blue one is just one, which is basically mostly residential. So you can see that if you live in the area which are relatively in a warmer color, it means that within five minutes walking distance, you can do a lot of different things. Whereas if you live in the area with, in cold colors, it means that you have to walk farther or you take different uh, modes of transport. And also when it comes to access to services, there is more direct impact on health. And so, for example, access to GP surgeries, and this is fundamental in two different ways. One is the, um, in terms of active travel, whether you can walk to GP surgeries, but also whether you can access at all. And so, if you map the GP locations, and if you calculate the walking distance in the same way, this is the map. So the darker blue means that the five minutes walking distance and um, gray means that there is no GP within 15 minutes walking distance. So you can see the spatial disparity and which are the areas which, um, which are dis disadvantaged in terms of the access to GPs. And then you can also calculate that um, in terms of how many GP surgeries that you can access. So the dark blue shows that two or more, and blue is one, and gray is zero. And we also calculated, estimated the proportion of households, for example. So in Greenwich, 66%, so two thirds of the households have access to two or more GP surgeries. But 12% has none within 15 minutes walking distance. And um, what we looked at was a physical access, but actually, ac the, in reality, accessibility is not only about be being able to access to GP surgeries, but whether they are available or not. There is a capacity issue. And so you can map out the um, capacity of individual GPs. So for example, we looked at um, number of doctors per patient. And then you can calculate again the number of households within certain catchment areas, how many of them have a certain level of doctors. And also the the quality is important. So not only that you can access to a GP surgery, but is it a good GP surgery or not? And this is relevant when it comes to, of course, schools as well. People do not want to just go to a school, but you might want to choose better schools and so on. So again, using the same techniques that we can calculate that um, so for, in this case, dark blue shows that these people, 7% of the household in Greenwich has access to good GP surgeries um, rated on top um, quarter in 15 minutes walking distance. The last one is social isolation. And that is also influenced by social condition, uh, spatial conditions, density, and demographics. So a we used um, Age UK published um, the index for social, um, social isolation. So that uh, is mainly um, including the demographics. So age, 
health condition and so on. So based on the demographics, you can identify the high risk population and where they live. So that is at the background in the gray scale. So the darker it is, it's a high risk of social isolation. And on top of that, what we overlaid is the spatial conditions. And this is a calculation of the, the number of resi like residence, residence addresses within 15 minutes walking distance. So it means that the darker it is, it basically it's a bigger neighborhood. There are more people around you within 15 minutes walking distance. And this is quite interesting because you identify that the area which is um, the darker blue and dark gray or black is overlapping, for example. So that means that you have a lot of neighbors, but you are at high risk. Whereas other parts, you have low density of neighbors and you, you have high risk population. So clearly that the, it means that the, the sort of um, interventions that we need to think about might be different in these two different areas, different types of areas. And it's, this is not compared, uh, compared with actual isolation data, but once we get that um, we have a data in hand, we can overlay those um, information to see where actual isolations are experienced. So finally, um, some suggestions for urban designers. I was requested to make suggestions. So um, yes, urban design principles for healthy places. So as you have seen, um, I hope that I managed to demonstrate that a combination of connectivity or spatial network, land use distribution, density could influence health outcomes significantly. So consider the social impact of design in the wider context, and this can be measured and compared between options. I'll show you just a few examples, a couple of examples. So for example, this is what we have seen, access to GP practice and walking. And if you intensify some grid, and you can see that what, um, what kind of impact it might have. So you might be working on the site, and it's not only within the site, but what you do on the site would have influence on the wider population in terms of health health outcomes. And for example, this is another example of schools. And if you create a new school, what's going to happen? It's not too difficult to kind of demonstrate, but when you actually see these things, it becomes quite clear what kind of impact um, individual site development might have. Thank you very much. <laughs>